I give you the Reverend Dr. Michelle Wadley. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good to be here. I don't normally have notes, but I had an inspired moment. And I don't know if you know about inspiration. You have to capture it. Because even though inspiration can be brilliant, it's fleeting. It's like a fussy little butterfly. It doesn't stay still long enough for you to catch it. And so uh, what started this inspiration was sitting in Reverend Alice's car and seeing her bumper sticker respond with love. And it, it struck me to my core. Because right now there's a lot of not that showing up in the world. There's a lot of conflict, a lot of confusion, a lot of divisiveness. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. So tell, somebody tell me where to go. We're good? I'm hot. My, my, my mic is hot. It, it, okay, as long as it's bouncing in my ear. Yeah. I used to think that. But there's a time when, 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 as a woman, there's a time where, where suddenly the first person calls you ma'am, and you know the good old days were o are over. <laughs> so... But it's what is. Then you then you sit in the glorious. This is so off topic, but then I you sit and you're able to be in, um, invisible, and people don't know you're watching them, because they're not noticing you anymore. But you see them and you see everything. Anyway, respond with love. In my humble but very powerful uh, opinion, needs to be our rally cry. Not, not your just rally cry, the movement's rally cry. The movement. Contrary to many opinions, love is not a wimpy response. Love is not a soft response. Love is not spiritual bypass when practiced by conscious, self-aware individuals. Although it can be, I'm no fool. I know it can be. I know this, however, couched properly used by aware, awake, conscious, and studied people, love is and always has been the most powerful, life-transformative, healing, and disarming power that is. Yes? Yes. yes. Love is that which birthed us. Love is that which encourages parents to keep a child even when it has an extra um, tri trisomy, mm, extra chromosome. I tried to get the other word out, but I messed it up. Love invites us to adopt a dog from a shelter instead of buying a dog. Love invites us to use reusable cups rather than paper cups or things that would harm the planet. Love has us serving in a spiritual community. Love causes generosity. Love says, let me sit with you while you grieve. And to just be present. Love holds your heart when you're sad. And love whispers to you, reminding you that you are enough. But you have to listen. Whether we know it or not, that whispering is often happening, but we're not still enough to catch it. So we have to be still enough and quiet enough to catch it. And let me tell you, the world needs people who know their enoughness. Because those, who, those people who know that they are enough and practice that, those are the pra people who practice do no harm. Those are the people who do no harm in any direction. I want to switch mics. It's bouncing. Oh, maybe that's what's going on. Thank you. Sorry. <sighs> Respond with love needs to be our rally cry. But there's so much more. Love asks us to wake up to social injustice. 
It is that the driving force behind social, inju so, social injustice causes. We seem to, I seem to see a divisive, a, a divisive opinions that says, oh, if we want to love and pray, that's good, but it's not enough. Oh, hell no. There's no way that love is not enough, but love through social justice, praying for social justice, but from the place of wholeness, it's a both end. We got to stop separating them like they're two different subjects. I care about social justice because I am the place where love resides. Yes, that's who we are. Because if I didn't experience this love moving, moving through my body and my essence and my being and my commitment, I wouldn't care. It is love that causes me to care. It is love that causes you to care, whether you realize it or not. And I know the organization right now is re, kind of redirecting our attention a little bit. Let's keep it both end. Love says Oh, no, sorry. Um, I lost my place. <laughs> Love asks us to wake up to all social injustices, to racial inequ inequity, to those within the LGBTQIA+, and with individuals that we can identify and we can't identify no matter what their pronoun is. It's too bad that we're uncomfortable. They live uncomfortable. They live in that state. We can manage being a little uncomfortable, can't we? Yeah. Right, let's put our big girl panties on and suck it up and be okay about that. We are, re you and I are required to the be more right now. We are required to be more. Look out at the news. We are needed. Responding with love is needed. Love calls us to accept without understanding. If you have to understand someone before you accept them, if you have to understand someone before you have compassion, you've just put a condition on your understanding and acceptance. You get that? You, can, you have to accept and love without understanding. Now, if the understanding comes, it's always helpful. It's lovely. Like, that's a, that's a courtesy, and when we get it, it's wonderful. But you and I are in a teaching. We are rooted in love. Love says, accept as is. Accept as is. I am constantly fascinated how someone being different can activate fear and judgment. Now, I know there was a time that was necessary. There was a time with the Neanderthals that was necessary. That's how we stayed safe in our tribes. I know that. I think we've grown since then. We've hopefully spiritually matured, emotionally matured since then. We... Yes, we need to be the people who respond with love. Why us? Because if we don't, who will? If we don't, who will? If we don't have the capacity to love and stand in truth and principle, who will? We need to be unstoppable, unflappable, unmovable by, the, by, this, by what we see around us while looking at it, while facing it. Because our, we, if we're not careful, are part of the division. You, you, you see that? If I strike a strong opinion against anything, I of myself am causing division. And that's not who I want to be. We are the people who believe in unity, one life's expression, everywhere present, always available, ebbing and flowing and moving, the top of the V, Right? The top of the V, the all that is in our teaching symbol. That is who we are. If that's so, how can we be part of any separation? And I'm talking about whether it's, it's social, social, um, social subjects, even if it's politics, let's not let 
us be moved by the news. Let's not let them have a way, have their way with us. You get what I'm saying? Oh, man. It is love that asks us to acknowledge our individual and collective shadow. We got to be able to look at the down and dirty. We got to be, be able to look at the underbelly and then do the healing work. To respond with love while looking at our shadow and to be willing to take agency over our lives and not let anything distract us from that. To be powerful and never see anyone as another. Never see anyone as another. To be powerful, we need to stand with love, in love for all facets, which means all with all people as they reflect who we are back to ourselves. You don't like something about me? Go look in the mirror before you condemn me. And I promise to go look in the mirror before I condemn you. I promise to do that. I promise to own myself. And I promise to own the me that lives in you. I promise to do that. So I will not find fault and I will not blame and I will not make you wrong. That's my commitment to all people always. Ram Dass said, we're all just walking each other home. Nice concept, right? But I'm seeing the contrary. I'm seeing the contrary. I wish I didn't, but it's happening right here amongst our science of mind adherence. It is. I would love to challenge all of the remaining centers besides the, the or, or for San Juan, um, for Capistrano Valley to take the lead with the respond for love. Let your let this be your rally cry and let you inspire all the other centers internationally to take that on as a rally cry. Can you feel that? What's possible when we ponder that? What do we have to do? You and I, we have to get emotionally grounded and do our healing work. Of course, for me, because of my filter, that means forgiveness work. That means shadow work. It means taking responsibility for who I am and my role in the world. When you find yourself reacting to anyone, go within to, to your inner landscape, and inner landscape and ask, hmm, gee, what's this all about? Instead of saying, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with him? If you and I practice this exclusively, we would never be able to stand against anybody. You get that? Consider trying that. Oh, gee, what am I feeling here? My mantra when I teach, all, all the classes that I teach in my forgiveness and shadow classes is, uh, is this. There is no other. There is no outside. Try that with me. There is no other. There is no outside. Now, that has to alter your opinions a tiny bit with what's going on in the world, doesn't it? Doesn't it have to make you just twist your head a little bit and see it differently? And shouldn't we? Yes, I use the should word. We should. Because if we don't, who will? We have been trained in a possibility of life that's stunning. But we have to activate it every day with every person. This is how I can get behind the rally cry of respond with love. And then start really, really, really watching your mind. Take back your power. Take it back from social media. Take it back from the news. Take it back from the gossiping. Take it back from those who are trying to grab your attention. Take your power back to be self-realized. But let's, let's, let's change our focus a tad. Social activism is good. It's good. But let's remember, it is love that drives it. And let us bring love into our social activism, into our volunteering. If you're serving people that are homeless, I know you use another term now, unhoused, 
don't quite understand that, but I don't have to understand it. Um, bring love, not pity. Love, not pity. I am full in full support and declare that respond with love is not soft. It is powerful beyond our imagination, and it should be our international rally cry for all metaphysicians everywhere. When we respond with love, we will be we will be first to make amends. You have you made some errors in your life. Anybody make any errors? Anybody done some things you wish you hadn't done? Clean it up. Clean it up. Be that. Be the teaching. Honestly, how powerful that would be. Be the first to be kind and to make room for our enemies at our table. And we will, and we need to do so courageously. This is not the place of being conscious and working in, con this is, not in place of being, um, excuse me, conscious and working in consciousness. It's not in place of that. It's in addition to. Respond with love can be an outward expression of who we are as potent and powerful conscious beings. What will it take for us to demonstrate this? First, as I said earlier, take care of your emotional and spiritual health. Do what you got to do. However, whatever that looks like for you, we'll each have a different way to do that. Be willing to think before responding. Fact check. Fact check all news before getting riled up. Make sure that what you're, re what you're jumping on, make sure it's real. Go direct in a conflict. Go direct. The world needs people who go direct. Not go direct aggressively, but go direct and say, hey, can we talk? How powerful, just all of these little tweaks, they become so powerful. They make you more powerful. They make the center more powerful. You have a problem with Reverend Ellis, go direct. Say, hey, Dr. Ellis, can we talk? Or anyone else. Forgive completely and pray for your enemies consciously. Consciously. The law is my shepherd and guide. I shall not want. I am guided to lie down in green pastures. I settle beside still waters. I am restored and grounded in true oneness. I am led along a path of revelation and personal power. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am fearless. And as I face what is before me, I am revealed. I am always supported and never outside of the one. Spirit, strength, and truth direct my actions, and I am comforted. While I see the temptation to judge and fear, I have been anointed, and I can see past all evil and all limitations, never living at the mercy of anything or anyone. I live in an abundant universe. Surely a path of goodness and abundance are laid before me, and I walk this path with my heart open my mind awake, and my eyes always on the horizon of possibility. And I dwell in the house of love, for ever as I cry out, I shall respond with love. Yes? Whether religious science, unity, divine science, Anton communities, or any other independent new thought communities, we need to rally. I don't, I don't care what side of the political aisle you're on. We need to rally in consciousness. We need to rally. We need to get our proverbial stuff together. <laughs> we need to get it together. We need to rise up and be 
the conscious presence wherever we go. There's a lot going on. Get, get out of the United States. Do some, do some research, and you see the, oh, there's, there's genocide happening as we speak in places. Let us be the place of love. Let's practice. Can we practice together for a moment? So if you're comfortable doing so, close your eyes. Close your eyes. And recall some kind of recent discord or upset that's happened in your life. Something fairly recent. Recall it enough to feel it just a tiny bit. And now ask yourself, did I respond with love or did I respond with judgment? Depending upon that answer, ask yourself, what if I did respond with love? What would change if I responded with love? Who would I be if I always responded with love? And what I'd like you to do, if you're willing to, I'd like you to bring up an answer to that last question. Who would I be if I always responded with love? And turn to the person next to you and share the answer to that question. Just share with somebody. How would you be different? Who would you be if you always chose to respond with love? Right now, share with somebody. Let's speak that into the room. Just a quick share. Quick share. Now, can you feel how the room kind of softened? The energy in the room completely softened as you began to share that. We need to be that person. So let's do a little call and response since you did it yesterday and you had so much fun with it. I'm going to say something and you're going to say respond with love. When you have discord in your house, respond with love. When you have discord in your spiritual center, when you watch the news, when you watch social media, when you're starting to feel judgmental, imagine how it would be different if that was our rally cry now and always. I can pray. I'd like. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I just want to secure this in consciousness. And if you want to hold the hand of somebody, I always invite that. I, it's funny. You guys have those little hearts out there. And I thought the hearts meant that I wanted to be hugged. I was going to put them all over. <laughs> and then I read it a little closer with, oops. <laughs> so I didn't put them on. The world needs connection. That is for sure. Let us know together that there is a power, a presence, a love, an ebb and flow, an energy, a vastness that is always seeking to avail itself to, through, and as each of us. Let us know that we, that we are the people who are willing to get grounded in principle, in possibility, that we are able to love ourselves like we have never loved ourselves before, allowing us to then love another that same way. Let us be blind to those who would think of themselves as our enemy. Let us see past it. Let us have the strength of God be the very strength in every muscle of our body temple. Let love be our breath let love be the beating of our hearts. Let us join 
arms, join arm in arm, heart in heart, and demand all around us just by modeling it. Demand a shift into complete acceptance and compassion and beauty. You are the one the world has been waiting for, whether you know it or not. I am the one the world has been waiting for, and I've begun to know it. Let's partner in this sweet possibility with principle in consciousness always. Consciousness first, consciousness always. Let us be the presence of love and let's allow responding with love to be our rally cry. If you're willing to just ponder this, speak a yes into the room and feel that covenant within you and let's together, let's release it to love to law and to the awe of life itself. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.